Oh my god, giant! Giant! Dead follower again. Wow. Oh my god, did you see that? Dude, like, it went, it like, got, it got tight. And I let it, I just let, let it there and put, oh my gosh, I was like crawling over a rock and I stopped it and just went, oh. Come here. Yeah. That's how you get him to react. You feed them by hand with a spoon. Bass fishing is actually quite simple. We like to over complicate things. Got to have the prettiest flash. It's got to have the right fins, the right amount of scales, flake, eyeballs. It's actually a lot simpler than that. I mean, going back decades and decades and decades, I mean, the spoon has triggered bass for as long as fish have been around. It's been catching musky, trout, bass. The little ones catch the panfish for all these years. Such a simple lure. There's no question that uh, that game fish are attracted to flash. And when you mix that flash with that, that sudden cut, that cut in the water that provides vibration, sound, it triggers a game fish into putting its lips on it. Whether it's out there in the ocean, uh, that real shallow pond, we're doing everything we can to get that trophy size bite in the boat. And in my opinion, this spoon right here, the Big Larry Spoon, we knocked out of the park. It's 2023. Uh, the term being triggered is thrown around there a lot. Um, me as a professional bass fisherman, I'm trying to trigger fish into biting every single day. And I need everything on my side to trigger these bass into biting. How do I tap into the mind of a bass when a bass is sitting on that ledge out there in 15, 20 feet of water and it knows when a you know school of gizzard shad swims by, I'm triggered and it's go time. Um, but when there's no gizzard shad around and when that fish is just sitting dormant and hanging out, how do you trigger that fish into biting? It's that flash, it's that vibration, it's tapping into that fish's mind. So I believe it was in the like early 2000s, I was just out of high school, I was doing the swim bait thing out in California, and I started hearing about these, these Texas guys throwing Lake Fork flutter spoons, and then later became a Ben Parker flutter spoon out on the Tennessee River. You know, I was hearing and reading about, you know, this giant flutter spoon and it triggering fish, you know, big bass into biting offshore. Oh, the offshore, the hump bite, the ledge bite, the flutter spoon bite. Like, wh like what is that? I, being from California, we, what is that? We started hearing about it more and more and more. You place it in the tournament world and all of a sudden you're seeing these 30 pound bags outside of the spring, May, June, July. And I'm just thinking, there aren't very many lures in our industry uh, that are made specifically, you know, for that, you know, the dog days of summer. You always hear about that post-spawn funk. To me, there's no other lure that, that triggers bass in that post-spawn funk in the dog days of summer like a flutter spoon does. It taps into, you know, their feed mode. It feels right, it shines right, it falls right, just like a bait fish would. And, you know, as I keep referencing a flutter spoon, it does exactly what, what it sounds like it's doing. It just flutters down. But there's no one flutter, uh, just like a spinnerbait blade. A willow leaf does one thing. It provides flash, less vibration. An Indiana blade has got flash. It's got, you know, a little more vibration. A Colorado blade's got all vibration. So all flutter spoons are not created equally. I think the biggest thing with flutter spoon fishing is the rate of fall, how fast it falls. Does it fall like a leaf, like a maple leaf falling down in the air? Does it do, do, do that? Or does it fall like a, a willow leaf off a tree? Does it spin down? In my opinion, having that perfect blend of spinning and shimmying at the same time triggers the biggest bass into biting. Not all spoons are created equal. 
I mean, looking back at the original Lake Fork flutter spoon, where it's got that perfect just spin, nice little flutter to it, but you know, it imitated a threadfin shad, smaller bait. Then, you know, the Ben Parker Magnum flutter spoon came out and it had the profile, but less spin. Now, the Big Larry spoon, it's got the perfect spin, the big profile, and that side to side flutter. But there's some little tweaks that I've learned along the way while, while fishing um, a big spoon. I've had some absolute heartbreaks with this thing and coming up with a system, whether it be the right swivel, the right split ring, all these things matter. The right hook size with the, the right marabou flash, um, the gap to spoon, you know, ratio, hook point ratio, all that stuff you take into consideration because I've had a lot of instances where I did not get those fish to the boat. So you just learn along the way, what makes those fish tick? What allows you to land these fish? Um, all the components on this, on the Big Larry spoon help you land more of these fish. And trust me, I've tried all the different combinations of flip and stick, uh, big cranking rod, uh, a soft rod, a heavy rod, braid, fluorocarbon, you know, swivel, no swivel. I tried all the different combinations. And it seems like now with the introduction of the Big Larry Spoon mixed with that nice soft long rod braid to fluorocarbon, I feel like that system, um, you know, helped me catch 80% of the fish or more uh, that bite that fluttering spoon. There's a lot of parallels um, with flutter spoon fishing and that awesome glide bait bite or that big swim bait bite. I could put it like this. So, uh, you know, when the fish are done spawning, they move offshore. They're very, very hard to catch. So the guys that pick up a deep diving crankbait, that crankbait is moving horizontally through the water system, horizontally along the bottom. And, you know, fish have to chase it down to bite. But you look at a glide bait, you look at a flutter spoon, there's a lot of pause in your face and vertical action. A deep diving crankbait, it, it really triggers a bass when it deflects, when it hits something. A flutter spoon doesn't have to hit anything. All it has to do is, all you gotta do is place it to where a bass is near and it does its erratic action for you. You pop it and you let it fall on a slack line and it's just like a crankbait deflecting off those rocks or off that ledge or off that point, except that flutter spoon is right there in their face and it's erratic. It's that erratic fall that triggers those fish into biting. And I've seen it time and time again. There's something about that action right there as you pop it up and flutter it down vertically. It's kind of suspended in their face. It's got the shine, it's got the cut, it's got the vibration. It triggers that fish into biting right now. And most of the time, that very first fall, that very first pop in that group of fish off the bank is gonna be the biggest bass in that school of fish, in that area, because that fish owns that area. And when you drop that piece of metal through there and it flutters and does, it th does its thing, that's the biggest fish of the day, guaranteed. See, they're following the swim bait like crazy. I can see them down there. There's three of them on it. Oh my god! But when you pick dude. up the spoon, that's when you trigger them. Water's hot in the 80s. They're schooled up. There's no bait fish around, but there's something about that flutter that just gets them to commit to it. It like triggers an instinct in, in them. It's like a competitive instinct where I gotta get it, not my buddies, I gotta get it. And a swim bait is just real slow, gives them time to think about it. Oh, there's so many of them. Oh, they're on it, they're on it, they're on it, they're going crazy. Big one. <laughs> Yeah. Come here. Yeah. That's how you get them to react and you feed them by hand with a spoon. That is awesome, man. There's just something about that bite as you pop that that flutter spoon up 
and it starts to fall down. And you know you popped it five feet off the bottom and it only falls a foot down. And on that next pop, you lay into something that feels like a log on the bottom. Every time you pull this thing up off the bottom, you're giving them an opportunity to steal it from their buddies. Every single time. Here's another one. There's another big one right there. A couple big ones. They're smoking it. Oh my gosh, every cast. Got him. Uh. Yep. Yeah. There's like two dozen down there just like that. There's something about that freaking metal that gets them going, dude. And over the last 10 years, I've tried all these different spoons. The original Lake Fork spoon, the five inchers, the six inchers, the sevens, the eights, the 10 inch spoons, and all of them have their place. But in my opinion, that seven to eight inch spoon with that nice cupping to it, you're, you're both after the biggest fish in the lake and you're also after those tournament grade three and four pounders. So, you know, whether it's a swim bait or a big flutter spoon, staying in that seven to eight inch range, that perfect gizzard shad profile, that right there sets you up for success. Just having that profile. Profile is everything when you're trying to convince that fish uh, that that is the real deal. That is a real gizzard shad. On the fall, dude, giant. Yeah. That was awesome. On the fall, dude. The profile, man. The absolute profile. To all those questions in my social media inboxes regarding a flutter spoon, you know, I get more flutter spoon questions than I do about swim baits. So I know, you know, the public wants to know and learn more about flutter spoon fishing and the collaboration with Nichols Lures you know, Trey at Bass Mafia and Brooks over at, at Nichols, you know, we've all come together to develop, in my opinion, the best falling, the best flashing, the best spinning flutter spoon available, uh, the Big Larry Spoon. So one of the coolest things about working with Bass Mafia is, is, is the license to develop. That is one of the coolest things um, as a touring bass angler you know, I get real-time info every single weekend I'm out there. Bringing that information back to Bass Mafia and then expanding that into a Nichols lure and having that collaboration with the angler, the specialty manufacturer and Bass Mafia in the middle to bridge those gaps is an absolute home run. And this is, uh, this is nickel plated brass. And like, so like availability on like these raw materials, brass or the nickel dipping process, there aren't very manufacturers in the world that that's capable of doing this to like this scale, correct? You know, we see a lot of competitors make the mistake. They love to stamp stuff out of stainless. Yeah. Um, the simplicity is deceiving. You know, the details really matter. And so, yeah, running it through a brass die uh, press and then nickel plating it, you know, those things are done on purpose to have, you know, the perfect weight uh, to width, you know, ratios and, you know, and to give it, those things are all going to impact the fall and they're going to impact, you know, the surface area, the density, and the durability of the bait. Uh, but there's reasons that we do it the way that we do it, yeah. These flutter spoons, we've been, we've been trying and trying and trying to make the perfect one. Little inspiration from some Japanese spoons, little in inspiration from American-made spoons, different types of materials it cannot be copper it cannot be aluminum it cannot be stainless steel nickel plated brass is the absolute only material that allows that spoon to spin to flutter the size the stamping the texture nickel plated brass is the only material that gets the job done and you know, who better than Nichols Lure Company because they've been stamping nickel plated brass for a long, long time. Yeah, it's all about kind of balancing surface area with weight to make it kind of, you know, there's a few styles. This is much more of a cradling spoon like yes. you guys know and design it for. Yes. You know, this spoon, when it hits the water, it's gonna give you that nice tight, you know, cradle. Yep. The Ben Parker's a lot flatter. That's what makes these spoons so different that flatter surface area, it's more of a shooting, kind of a darting action. And so depending on what you're looking for, you know, there are right. kind of different tools in the toolbox. I mean, yep. especially with forward-facing sonar, yeah. there's a big argument to want one that just is gonna give you this nice cradle yep. 
rather than one that may end up six feet where you didn't want it to be because it shot and you know it caught that water column just right yeah shot way over there one kind of accidental uh, uh kind of attribute to this spoon that we've come up with is the fact that it swims away from me and i'm you know with forward facing sonar a lot of times i'll pitch this in there you know over the last couple of weeks on a very slack line super slack that's the key and this thing will swim literally away from you as it's spinning and fluttering so that was kind of an uh, an accidental discovery there but uh, but definitely yeah useful tool. i think that's gonna be either. huge like talking about dock fishing yeah. i mean it's kind of like what ben parker did you know way back when you know yeah. and now it's kind of like a just a more of a fresh look kind of techniques have been updated and this spoon kind of you know keeps up with those updated techniques electronics technology or whatever it is kind of good little refresher yes there's absolutely time and a place for a, a mini mag or the original ben parker spoon but this is a kind of a nice in between both size shape uh and then rate of fall and um so yeah it's a good little addition so you've been using the decoy hook in the ben parker spoons for years and years and years with good results and we yeah. settled on is this a two lot on this one it's actually it's three, three odd, um, and it's just like such a, a premium hook. So, and then obviously oversized split rings, you gotta have that because when we're dealing with heavy metal like this, uh, it's gotta be durable, but also uh, usable, right? I mean. Definitely. So yeah, what do we uh, figure out on the barrel swivel thing? So uh, yeah, I know it's tough. <laughs> I know I'm it's working right. on that. Yeah, yeah I'm, good, I've good, got good. spoons on route. Um, yeah. You know I mean? By the time this comes out, I'm hoping it's going to be, you know, a pretty high strength ball bearing swivel. That's the goal. Strength um, with the ability to move. Yeah. With the twist. Yeah. 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 Um, and I'm sure you can speak a lot more to that. Yeah. You know, yeah, yeah. I fished smooth a lot, but not, you know, certainly not as much as you. And yeah. so, um, so that's kind of where we're at right now. We don't want to settle. Yeah. Um, so kind of still in process of figuring out what that's going to look like. Yeah. Yeah. We are. I mean, that's, that's just uh, being absolutely candid about that it, it's, it's it's not that easy you got to look at you know the design cost availability all of that all of that combined so it's really really uh it's really challenging yeah no look. doubt okay, cool all right sweet and then uh one of the, one of the goals i have um you know moving forward with this especially when they become available is showing people that it's more than just a ledge and offshore deep water post-spawn spoon there's times in the pre-spawn where, you know, the exact same place I want to throw a glide bait, like off the end of that dock in eight feet of water, I'll pitch this spoon over it. Bam, they hop on it right away. How many times have you pulled up to a dock and you see crappie fishermen on the dock and, you know, you come by and they're like, man, I just, I just had a giant bass chasing my crappie around. That's where this thing shines right there. And that could be any time of year, not just in the post-spawn, but like in the fall, any time of year. So that's one of my goals is to just let people know it's not just a offshore Tennessee River ledge bait. I mean, there's a there are a lot more ways to use this thing, um, you know, in your arsenal and take full advantage of it, you know, from January all the way through December. I mean, if you've never popped a spoon off a deep ledge or a point um, or your favorite offshore spot on, on your home lake, I highly suggest you check out uh, the Big Larry Spoon because it triggers the biggest bass into biting. If that collaboration with this spoon right here is something I'm really excited to share with the fishing public because it's one of those those lures, those techniques that's got this aura about it. It's just, it's not, it's not normal. It's not normal. It triggers fish into biting. It taps into the mind of a game fish and that is one of the coolest things in the sport of fishing, whether it's tournament fishing or fun fishing, triggering a giant bass into biting when, you know, a lot of times it doesn't want to. And in my opinion, this spoon right here, we knocked out of the park.